Hello, hello everybody. Uh, well, uh, thank you so much for being here in this talk. Uh, here we have the pleasure to have Roberto Stahl. Uh, he's from the company Seur Composites, a company that is helping uh, a lot in the Hyperloop industry. In fact, he's one of the main partners of Hyperloop UPV as a team. So for us, a pleasure to have Roberto here with us and just to say you welcome and enjoy the talk. Well, thank you very much, Maria. Uh, firstly, I, I would like to thank all the organizers of the Hyper, uh, European Hyperloop Week because I think this event is the best way to, to continue the original SpaceX com uh, competition and to take it to Europe and to Valencia, which I think is one of the main cities in the Hyperloop industry here in Europe. I would like to start uh, talking a bit about my company and its model company, okay? MBHA Group, uh, just, uh, just some slides. Uh, okay, we are a company that we are tier one for all the big manufacturers or trucks in Europe. Uh, we are the leaders in design and production of heavy duty truck, truck suspension. That is leaf springs, which is why, which you can see there, which is a metal, a metal suspension, okay? Which now, it's only limited mainly to heavy duty trucks, but in the past was used in all the vehicles, okay? During the, or that time, more or less, we are a company that was founded in 1963 with around 320 employees. We have invested about 54 million in the light, light, 10 years in research and development, including in the composite area, okay? And uh, almost everything that, uh, that, we, that we manufacture, we export. Export it mainly to Europe, but also to South America, Asia, etc. And that's the, our turnover or another data that is not. Okay, so that is our company, okay? So you maybe are uh, you asking why uh, are you, I, I am here if we manufacture a steel lift springs, which is totally different with any product that Hyperloop can, can have, okay? So that is, this is our clients, okay? But you can see, I can see, I said before, uh, Volvo, MAN, Nissan, Iveco, Renault, Scania, all the truck manufacturers that we have here in Europe. And then is fuel composites. Fuel Composites uh, was founded like four years ago because uh, MBHA Group was developing a, a leaf spring in composite, in glass fiber. So when we started as a, as a division inside MBHA Group, uh, like doing research, research tasks, okay? We developed the first prototypes, we presented it to our clients. They thought it was a good idea. A good idea. We started to manufacture. We started to test our products in our in our in our company because we have a lot of uh, ben test benches. And then uh, the um, the bosses of MBHA decided to create a new company and invest money and in the composite market. For that, they uh, not only with the idea of um, taking the leaf spring to composite, which is still uh, our main product in composite, but to create another products and collaborate with no, in other sectors and other products and other technologies, etc. This that you can see here on the left, or at, or at the top left, uh, the pointer is, is not, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, it's a it's small uh, line, okay, that we have for pre-series. It's totally automated and it is the basis of what we wanted in theory when it was created which is uh, to uh, take all the processes that were used in, in, in the automotive industry to the composite industry, which till now is a very manual industry, even in the, in the great companies that use a lot of composite, like Airbus, et cetera, it's still a very manual, a very manual uh, um, industry, even with the use of automatic tape layers or automatic fiber placements that try to automate, to automate the, the products. So we have a cutting table, robots, presses, ovens, etc. that you can see there. I didn't have a video, I'm sorry. But as well as MBHA, we decided that we will, be, we will do all the same, the same 
uh, the, the same phases that MBHA has, which is from the product design to the testing and of, of, of homologation of the prototypes and the manufacturing of the great series, like thousands of parts. Uh, you can see here all the, all the technologies that we use in theory composites for manufacturing composites, RTM, high pressure RTM, compression, uh, compression molding, okay? filament winding, liquid resin infusion, which is the common known as infusion, and compression molding, uh, and all the sectors that we work for. I will explain a bit more about some of them later when I talk about the parts that we have collaborated in the manufacture for, the, uh, for Hyperloop UPV uh, during the last two years. Um, okay, so well, like I think it's four years ago because with the COVID I, uh, I lost a bit the timing. Uh, we got contacted by, by Hyperloop UPV in order to do uh, leaf springs in composite for their prototype Valentia. Uh, I didn't have any picture because I didn't, I, I, I tried to find a picture of that leaf spring, but any one of them was good to see. <laughs> they were very bad pictures. So they contacted us because we're, we were making composite leaf springs and they were thinking in a leaf spring system for their prototype. So we manufactured these springs in RTM and this is our first contact, in fact, with uh, Hyperloop. Hyperloop VV, Hyperloop industry. Because before that, the only thing that I, ha I have heard uh, about Hyperloop that is, was that it was an idea from Elon Musk that maybe it will, fi it will finish in a PowerPoint like this one, but it will better render it, okay? And with better pictures. But no, when we started to know the Hyperloop industry, we started to know uh, Hyperloop PV, Hyperloop uh, Anceleros. Uh, we have seen that this, uh, uh, there's a lot of people who is trying hard and very hard to try to make this reality. So for the next year, we decided to be the main sponsors and collaborate manufacturing a lot of parts for the Turian, which is what you can see here. Uh, this is uh, some renders of Turian and the parts that we made from this, for this prototype, which were from the carbon fiber chassis, which I will explain a bit later the configuration of this chassis, the carbon fiber firing that you can see there left, a, a composite leaf springs guidance system because, well, it was leaf springs and we make leaf springs, so it has to, it has to have leaf springs. And this carbon fiber battery boxes that uh, thanks, thanks that they don't, didn't ask to us to manufacture them this year also because we don't like it very much. And this is our collaboration this year, which is in this we have collaborated again with the carbon fiber ch chassis, which in this kind is a different kind of chassis with a different geometry, with this kind of omega shape. Uh, also, for the reinforcing ribs, manufactured in, manufactured in SMC. And um, the carbon fiber panels and fiber. We also, all, everything of this for the aerodynamic part of the, of the pod. Uh, I would like, before, before, before explaining a bit more of the parts, that we, that we did, explain a bit more of just a brief, a brief explanation about the processes that we have used for this, for this manufacturer in order to be able to explain to you why we think these processes could be, uh, could be useful, not only for this kind of prototype, for prototypes or for the competitions of the university, but also for the, for the future of Hyperloop development in the, in the commercial industry, okay? This is RTM, you can see the, or the, the flow of the process. We start, we start adding binder in the fabric. That that's is made because if we don't put binder or binder, uh, when we inject the resin cal can create wrinkles and other defects in the fiber. After the layup, we go to a preform tooling, which in a prototype phase, for example, could be the same than the injection tooling. And we apply some heating and some pressure. After that, we, we have an stabilization preform, which is stiff enough to manipulate, but it's not injected, it's not plastic yet, it's only fiber. 
and we put this, this part in the mold. Okay, we close the mold, we inject, and after the curing, we can open the mold and demold it. Depending on the kind of curing, you can have this part later to do a post-curing of the part in an external oven. With this process, you can reach injection pressures of up to 100 bars with an injection temperature of 100 degrees. When you inject uh, at more temperature, you uh, inject faster, but you need more pressure because in two, three, four, five minutes, uh, the part is cured. So you can inject when the part is cured. So you must be very fast. It's what is called high pressure RTM, and it's what is used in, uh, for example, uh, BMW used it in its uh, i3 when they created the first, the first, uh, the first model. Uh, you can see there a cycle time of less than five minutes. It's very automatable, as you can see there, as, as you have seen before in the line that, you have, that we have in our laboratory. Have a very, very good finish in both sides of the, of the part because it's a, it's a closed mold process. So you don't have a good A side and a bad B side, like it occurs on infusion, and you can see in any part that you, that you see in infusion that it has a very good part, which is in contact with the mold, and a very regular part, which, because you have to use a peel play, a bag, a flow mess. Uh, the, the finish is not as glossy, and it's not as good. Okay? But uh, as a drawback, you have a higher cost of tooling, a very, uh, because you need a strong tooling, metallic tooling, and two parts of tooling, okay? That is another process, which is similar to RTM because you need a press, but in this case, you don't inject. This is the seed molding, com the seed molding compression in which you, you put seeds of fiber with the resin pre-impregnated in it, okay? And you uh, cut them and you press. You put them in the press, you apply pressure and temperature. So the material flows, um, all the cavity gets, full, gets filled, and uh, when the time passes, you have the part. In this case, you will need also up to 100 bars compression force, which depending on the size of the part, you could need very, very, very big presses. You need a temperature of 150 degrees, but for example, if a part is one or two millimeters, you can do a part in 30 seconds or one, or one minute depending on the thickness of the part, because normally, depending on the material and the resin, but it's between 30 and 45 seconds, millimeter, seconds per millimeter of molding time. And as well as the other process is highly automatable. And that's a good, uh, uh, that's very good for this process, is that it can fill all the cavity because it's sort of fiber, okay? So when you press, the fiber and the, and the resin flows, allow all the cavity of the mold, so you, it can allow make you, make you grips and another thing that you can see, you, you will see with, uh, after that. And, uh, but as well as the RTM, higher cost of tools because you need a very, very strong tool. Uh, well, I'm sure this process you have used it if you are working in composite. And is the liquid resin infusion or diffusion. It's similar to the process that the the previous, uh, I don't remember the, na the name, uh, uh, told that they were developing for the tubes of the hyperloop, okay? In this case, you need one mold, a lower mold, then a bag, peel play. You can do it with an inner tube, okay, also. So you, in, the, in this case, you will need an, an inner mold. But uh, with, this, with this process, you can manufacture very big parts, like, for example, uh, Wind blades, okay, are manufactured with this kind of process, or boats are normally, not all, manufactured with, with this kind of process because the cost, the inversion cost of the tooling is less and you don't need a press, okay? You only need the tooling, which can be made, for example, of a booth or, comp or even composite. Allows manufacturing of very thick parts, less cost of tool, but, uh, and requires in oven post curing normally, depending on the resin, okay? Depending on the resin, you will need to, after demolding the part from, the, from there, put it in, in an open post curing, depending on the resin and the TGE that you will need. The drawbacks, you need a lot of consumables, okay? Because each part you do, you need to use a bag, 
back with B, I even know with, okay, sorry, <laughs> to per play um, flow mess and another, uh, and another. And uh, also the B side, the part in contact with the back, the finish is not as good as the AI side. And it's a process that you need a lot of experience because depending on how you put the elements, you can get a good success on the part or the total failure. And the most simple uh, process, web layup. In this case, vacuum bag in web layup because when you finish the web layup, you put a bag in order to add some pressure and extract the access, the, uh, the, um, the access of resin from the part because when you put the resin by hand, you don't know how much resin are you putting. And as you know, in composite, uh, the fiber volume is very important. So if you more or less want to have a, a good fiber volume, you need to use a vacuum bag in order to uh, pull out all the resin from the part. The problem here, the quality is, is worst, is the, is the cheapest, but you have also consumables, you have also a, good, a back part in the, a, a back finish in the back part, but it's very easy. And the inversion in tooling is the less, the less one because you, the, the tool can be very, very simple. And this is Turian, okay? Uh, this is the chassis that we collaborated to make for Turian. In this case, uh, it consisted in four, well, three, three kind of parts. One upper plate, two lower plates, and the ribs that joined both parts, both parts between them, okay? The, the, the upper and lower parts were made of carbon fiber, no, uh, carbon fiber reinforced epoxy, and the ribs were made by SMC. You have here some, layout, some technical aspects, layout, the total length of the part, the chassis, and the natural frequencies that uh, the, the part the chassis had in this moment, okay? And a picture of how, how it, how, how of the finish of the, of the, of the part. I, it's diffi it is difficult to see there, but uh, the in this case, the finish on the, on the inner parts was the, was the good one because we had to maintain the tolerances. So it has, a, it has a very good finish, but the part that you see from the outside, the finish is not as good. This is a moment of the manufacturing of the part in our, in our facilities, okay? There, were, there were, it wasn't COVID in there, okay? <laughs> uh, well, a bit description of the textiles and the matrix that was used for this. Mainly carbon fiber, unidirectional and um, a textile. And the manufacturing process, which was like the recent infusion, we, made, we, we make a mold in which we can manufacture, in which we could manufacture from one side the flat plates and for the other side the plates that weren't flat. And the manufacturing time with this process and with these parts was about 30 minutes, including all the preparation of the part, the cut of the textiles, etc. cetera. Um, then after the extraction of the part, we put it in, in a curing oven at 100 degrees in order to achieve the mechanical properties required. And this is the chassis of this year. And you can see here, uh, it's totally different. It doesn't have a upper part and a lower part. It has an omega shape part. So the manufacturing of it is much more difficult because the geometry was difficult, but what's, much, what's more difficult, it has double curvature, so uh, it is difficult to avoid wrinkles during the manipulation of the textiles because uh, in these kinds of curvatures, the textiles tends to make um, wrinkles. And it was also made by uh, infusion in carbon fiber. Okay. Um, it was on the body, and the total length, I, th I don't think, if the total length is a bit longer than the, than the other one. So, more or less the same. The most important thing to notice here is that it's section change. Uh, difficult the manufacturing, uh, um, but it was a requisite in order to put in place a lot of things that you can see here below. Um, um, this is a bit, 
of, of a picture of how the allies, some of the of the plies were put in the in the in the part, okay, and the textiles that were used. Okay, and in this case, carbon fiber with a le uh, with less grommets than before, because it's easier to manipulate for this kind of geometries when the when the when the textile is thinner, and also uh, the same matrix than before, higher strength and the component. Um, in this case, as the cut of the part of the of the um, lace or of the plies was different, okay, uh, we use our automatic cut cutting machine that you can see here. So it was possible to cut different geometries, not only squares, with some level of precision. After that, uh, we place the elements with a laser that you will see later. I hope because. Uh, the picture is not very good, and uh, this is a, an example of the of the um, infusion of the infusion strategy that we made, which is one resin channel and those vacuum, two vacuum channels on the on the outer on the outer part of the part. We use also a directional flow mesh in order to increase the speed of the of the infusion, and after the and as well as before after the curing of the part. It was put in, in a post-curing oven to achieve the properties. These are some pictures from the, from the manufacturing of this part. Uh, it is difficult to see there, but right there in the first picture up, up, up is the laser, okay? It creates the shape of the layer, so when the operator uh, when he has to put the layer, he didn't have to, to measure the position but the laser is tracking the position of the of the layer, so he arrives, puts, the, uh, picks the core the layer, and he puts it on on the on the mold. Okay. Um, some pictures of the manufacturing. You can see there in the third picture upper, uh, the back. Okay, the back that was made in order to allow us to do the infusion. Okay, and a picture that was taken during the infusion. Okay, where uh, with the resin, with the resin flowing and filling all the part. The black part uh, is the part in which the resin has arrived, and all the part that you can see that is still white is the is the is the part in which no resin yet. Okay, and right below a part, the part recently extracted, uh, where when we were checking the position of the of the ribs. Um, for manufacturing the ribs, we have used in both, in both prototypes, in Turian and in Ignis, um, SMC. You can see there uh, the press and the mold and a section view of the mold uh, with a cavity, okay? So you put the material in, inside of the mold, cut it, cut it into squares, okay? You don't need to cut it with a very complex shape, never. And then you close the press with the mold. So after that, the part is finished, as you can see below. In this case, in this, for, in for Turian, we have to do a bit of uh, drilling, uh, of milling of the part, because we use a modular mold, so we have um, a bit of excess of material. Um, for this part, we use one, one, um, 10 megapascals of compression force, 150 of processing temperature, and we manufacture a specific hard steel tooling for Turian, and another specific hard steel tooling for Innis. Um, and in this case, you can see how the part has these, these ribs that reinforce the parts in the wanted direction, and this kind of geometries, it is difficult to make it in composite without using SMC or another compression processes. The process was basically the same. We put the SMC, carbon SMC, in the uh, based on weight, okay? We put it on the mold, and then we close the mold, applying 10 megapascals of compression pressure and 150 degrees. In this case, due to the thickness of the part and the, and the ribs, etc., the part was manufactured in three minutes, 
are more or less uh, in a net shape, okay? It, it requires uh, very, very little machining because the excess of material that you need to, to, do, to mill was uh, smaller. In this slide, uh, I wanted to put it because it, it seemed to me interesting to show how you, all the teams that, I imagine all the teams that are here, uh, test their prototypes in order to check that they uh, are, according to their specifications, doing all the tests, the static deflection, model analysis, the characterization of material. And it, for me, is very interesting because it's all the phases that you need to do when you are doing a real, a real product in the, in the industry. But in the, and how, on the level of, of, of work and uh, the child that is needed to be in a competition like this and do a prototype that, like the one that you have. Uh, well, the data is not so important, uh, okay. But a model analysis in order to obtain the, all the frequencies, normally in order to know uh, what is the first frequency, to check if, it's, if, if it is um, more than the, any of the frequencies that it will suffer during the use. So avoid resonances, et cetera. A static deflection test. You can see here the, theor the theor the theoretical one and the experimental one. In order, to, in order to check if the, if the part was manufactured okay and the stiffness of the part was the correct one, the expected one. This is in, in a very good correlation with the experimental model analysis because if the, if, the, if the part is not as stiff as it was expected, the frequencies will be very different, okay? And uh, the material stress strain curve in order to characterize the material that was used. These are the correlation between the the the, free, the FEAM model that Hyperloop UPL did in, the, in, the, in this moment, and the manufacturer part, okay, with the error on, in any one of the frequencies. The, and you can see there that more or less it, it's okay. Well, and then we go to fair wings. Because, because normally uh, one thing then, then you think when you manufacture in composites is do, that you want a carbon fiber uh, fairing because it's good, it looks good, it looks uh, high technology, uh, and it looks, it, it looks light. And it's okay, it's true. Um, in fact, in fairings, the good, the good point of fairings is, the, is that they are not structural. So, they are more, less risky uh, to when you manufacture the parts and when you put this composite in a new application. Fairings were the first parts in which composites were, were used in, in, the, in the industry, in the aeronautic industry, etc. Back in 1987, uh, for example, the um, A320 already have a, a glass Kevlar. <laughs> um, in belly fading, okay, and in other parts, also in composite. Okay, so we collaborated also for, for the, uh, from the, uh, with the manufacturing of the composite fairings for Turian and Ignis. This is the picture of Turian, which I think the design is very good, for, at least for me. And with a, and some technical data of the thickness of the part, the weight, the total weight, and its length. For this case, uh, when we manufactured the, the Turian firing, we decided to do it by vacuum back wet layup in order to reduce the cost of tooling. So, as I explained before, we put the layers on the, on the mold, we put the, we put the back, etc. we apply some pressure, etc. And now for Ignis, it has this flat panels, okay, okay, which were cut uh, manufactured by Infusion, that you can see how, you can see here the, the flat panels, okay, with 1.5 millimeter thickness and a weight of 1.5 kilograms. This is a picture of the Infusion process also. You can see there below, apart, just where the pointer is, 
the, the pointer of the of the of the mouse. <laughs> A, a, resin, a resin channel, okay, where the resin enters to the to the part during the infusion, and the and the, uh, the vacuum channel is on the other part of the of the panel, okay. Um, uh, in this case, we use a serial infusion enzyme because we wanted to try it. So there were various um, resin lines along the panel length. Okay, it wasn't needed, but it's a technology that we wanted to check, so we used it. And also, we needed about 30 minutes of infusion for manufacturing it. And the fairing of this year, which is also a very good design. Uh, I think that Kaiperloop put a lot of effort in the design of their firings. So for me, the designs are, are very good. And in this case, it was manufactured as one body. It was only body, just one body. It has a more complex shape than the one of, of Turian, or, and it was much bigger. Uh, when, when you see both together, you can see that they are much bigger. The thickness, about one kilogram, uh, one millimeter, and the part weight, 4.5 4 kilograms, according to the CAT. I'm not sure right now about the final uh, weight. And, you can, and again, the pictures of the manufacturing of the of the, of the fairing, okay? You put the ply, you put the pill play, you put the flow mesh, you do the back, uh, taking into account all the plies, all the curvatures, okay, et cetera, in order to avoid as much as possible all the wrinkles. And after that, you start the injection, so the resin flows, filling all the, cavi all, all the, all the part. When it finishes, you close the back, and you can post-cure it in an oven, or depending on the, or or not, depending on the on the properties that you need and the resin that you're using. And well, finally, leaf springs, because well, this is <laughs> what we mostly make. Uh, so in Turian, there were also leaf springs, but these are very special leaf springs because, just as a reference, the leaf springs that we make. Or even uh, even being in composite can weigh up to 50 kilograms per part, and these ones weighted 30 grams. Okay, uh, they were like this. I remember when I had them in my in my desk, they were <laughs> very 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 small. But well, it worked well, and uh, 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 finally they, they have the same the, the the same requisites than the than the than the big leaf springs. A stiff next to one chain, an R2M process, a specific design, glass fiber, epoxy resin, etc. As you can see here, we have um, a graph correlating load with displacement, so we can obtain the stiffness of the part and we can correlate it with the calculate one, which was more or less the same. And the mold for these leaf springs with, which was very, very small. Uh, and in this case, we use RTM, okay? Because, of course, this is a one-off. We are not going to manufacture these leaf springs again. But as they were leaf springs, we wanted to use the same process that we normally use, and because uh, it's okay, and the mold was small. So in this case, unidirectional, Glass fiber, B component, epoxy, manufacturing process, and the manufacturing process, as you see. A low pressure RTM, because as the part was very small, you didn't even need to uh, inject at a very high pressure, because in 30 seconds or one minute, all the part was injected. Six, six leaf springs were injected, okay? And well, uh, lastly, uh, battery boxes that we also made for for Valencia, okay, but it, I didn't have a picture. No. <laughs> uh, but we also make these, these battery boxes for Valencia. And well, in this case, due to the geometry and the, the because we, the, the cost of the tooling could be very big. If you use another process, we use vacuum bagging with layup again. So for this case, we use a disposable foam core so we can after the, after the part was cured, we can destroy the core 
and have the, have the box in that shape without, without any failure, okay? Um, they were, I don't remember if six or eight, or eight boxes, and they were made in carbon fiber. So, uh, right now, this is the, this is all the, all the collaboration that we have made right, uh, up, up to now with Hyperloop UPV, but this is not all that we have with, with, Hyper, with Hyperloop. Uh, five, I think when fuel was created, another thing that was made was that MBHA Group acquired a bit in Celeros because it, the, we wanted to be part of the Hyperloop industry. We wanted to, to, uh, to help the composites to be used in, in the Hyperloop because we think a new, a new transport new, needs new material and also new processes because I think we have the opportunity now that we are developing a new, a new transport from sketch of creating new processes and not be trans, translating all the processes that are being used since years ago, since, since a lot of years in aeronautic industry, for example, to a new mean of transport. We, I, we think we have the opportunity to sign it and create new, more automatable, reputable, and cheaper processes than the ones that are normally used in, in aeronautics. Of course, aeronautics and all the processes, apart from the ones that I'm going to show you, after they have the automatic tight layers, the automatic fiber placement, they have, there are another development that try to solve the same problem, which is the automation and, and, in, and the industrialization of the composite industry. Because right now you need a very well, um, very well learned uh, operator that, that has to know how to put the plies, how to, how to do the back, etc. But there are a lot of ways of doing this more uh, automatable, reputable, and cheaper. And one of them is this one. This is a, is a concept that, you, that we have developed and we have patented some of, the, some of them. Both concepts are patented, okay? Well, are patents in process. They are presented. Um, and well, they, the idea is to use RTM and, and SMC as well as maybe in fusion, depending on the size of the part, to do the Hyperloop, uh, the, the Hyperloop vehicle, okay? In this case, we, we think that a technology like overmolding, okay? Overmolding is a technology in which you create one part, one panel, with one technology, like this one, like, like, which can be made by RTM or by Infusion, depending on the size of the part. In this case, it was made by RTM. Then you put this part in a mold and you add another geometry, which if you uh, did the overmolding ac according to the requisites and you, with the correct mold and the correct design, gets totally uh, bonded to the part. So you have a unique part which has, for example, a carbon fiber with textile, very strange part, on the outside and good, with good finish. And on the inside, you have reinforcing ribs and another elements that you will need for attached elements that could you, you could need in the cabin. Okay. This is one of them. This is, this is, these are pictures from a prototype from one meter of one meter, more or less, that we did in our, in our company of this concept, okay? And we tested it and it worked very well. And the other one are for the for the string uh, for the ribs, okay. That in this case the idea was to make something similar, because in this case you need something strong to maintain the pressure from the outside, because well you are going in the pressureless vehicle, vehicle, and you also need a lot of, but you don't need. Uh, we, wanted, we didn't want it to make the traditional uh, parts that were made and then were glued and then um, or bolted to the, to, the, to the outer part of the tube, okay? So in this case, the technology was more or less the same. This is uh, 
two parts made of very strong carbon fiber, unidirectional or textile, depending on the depending on their requirements. And then they were attached with overmolding to create, which is kind of a traditional sandwich structure, but in one part, and with the possibility of adding some elements right there, right there, right there. So it is easier for the to attach all the other elements that are that that you will need. For example, there. Then, for example, for the stringers, you can use pultrusion pultrusion tubes, or another kind of concept that depends on of the final design of the of the of the of the cabin, whatever. We think that this technology could be usable and could be scalable and could be cheaper and could be, um, as I said before, I think that we have right now the possibility, not only with this kind of, of structures that is our proposal, but to change the way that composite is traditionally uh, used in the industry. Now that we are trying to develop a new mean of transport. Uh, well, that's all. I hope it's not, it, it wasn't very boring. So that's all. If you have any questions. Thank you so much, Roberto, for the talk. I think it's really interesting to know how the prototypes are manufactured in detail. So thank you. I don't know if there is anybody that wants to do questions or something. Oh, Laura. <laughs> Hello, I'm Laura from Hyped. I've got a question about, were you in the talk before this one? Sorry? Were you in the talk before this one? Yes. So if it's not too controversial, what do you think of <laughs> the, the composite solution they had for manufacturing a Hyperloop tube? Uh, the, the previous talk f was the first time I heard about this, about the first idea. Uh, so I, want, I don't want to talk too much about this because, <laughs> because I'm, I, there's a lot of details that they, they, they are not explaining, like it's, like it's normal because it's a, it's, it's a patented system. I think if, it, if they could uh, take it, if, if they could take it to reality, it's a very good idea. I suppose that all the problems that maybe I, I have think when I was hearing about it, they, they have them solved, okay? So it won't be a problem. And if they can take to reality, as, uh, as, they explain, as he explained, they are in the prototype phase, phase. So it's a very good idea because you will reduce a lot, a, a lot the transport the, of, the, of all the tubes, which in the case that they were made in steel or in a steel max plus concrete, they were structures, giant structures with the cost of the installation of the infrastructure will be very high. And in this case, you didn't need. Uh, so I hope uh, all the problems <laughs> are solved, and that is uh, that that is a very good it's a very really, a very good way to use composites in a, in a, in this. Okay, thank you. Laura wants to start a war between companies. Yeah, no, <laughs> that no, <question>. please. <laughs> okay, any more questions about this talk? Okay. Hello, um, I was just wondering, um, what about the pressurization of the composite in the sense that since it will be a vacuum system, what's your feeling about uh, the tightness of the composite structure? The, sorry, the, the what? Of the, in your, exactly this one. Uh, you will have a vacuum on the outside, obviously for the system, so what do you think is the composite enough to create the tightness that Hyperloop is? Ah, the tightness, okay. Uh, as well as I said, 
the thing for the previous uh, talk. Okay, this is a concept that we have developed, and there are a lot of a lot of technical aspects that uh, need a bit of uh, closing. But uh, you 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 could uh, the for example uh, the current um, the current planes airplanes most of the parts more than 50 percent are made is made of composite. Okay. So you can close the, uh, you can ensure the tightness of the pod with common with common with common methods. Normally, the pod, uh, or the cabin, the composite itself is totally tight, okay? Because it's a resin, it's a plastic. You don't have problem. The problem maybe is in the joint, in the joining on the different panels that have that, that you have during the during all the during all the all the vehicle. But uh, this is something that could be solved with not very difficult methods in order to ensure that you don't lose the tightness that I know is a very, very important, a very important thing in, in Hyperloop. Okay, anybody has? Okay. So I have to thank again uh, Roberto for being here. So I think that we can thank have another thanks to you. Thank you very much. And also I think that in like 10 minutes we are going to have Nevomo's talk. So I don't know if you have if you want to have a quick break, but in just at six o'clock we will have their talk. So I hope to see you all of you here in like Gracias.